David and Louise Turpin are facing life in prison over charges including torture after the 13 siblings, aged 2 to 29, were rescued. Two parents accused of shackling and starving their 13 children during years of abuse gave each one a name starting with the letter J, and they wanted to try for a 14th baby. David and Louise Turpin are facing life in prison over charges including torture after the siblings, aged 2 to 29 were found severely malnourished in a filthy house of horrors. The children were chained up, beaten and starved as punishment for doing something as simple as washing their hands above their wrists, it was claimed. A criminal complaint has revealed that all 13 of their children have names starting with the letter J, with three named by a childhood friend as Jennifer, Jessica, and Josh. Louise's half-brother Billy Lambert has told how she wanted to have a 14th child just days before she and her husband were arrested. David, a computer engineer, and Louise, a stay-at-home mom, face 94 years to life in prison if convicted on charges including torture, child abuse and false imprisonment. They face 75 felony charges. David, 57 is also accused of sexually abusing one of his daughters aged under 14 at the home in Paris, California. He and Louise, 49, who were married in 1984, pleaded not guilty to all the charges when they appeared in court on Thursday. The children, including seven adults, are being cared for at local hospitals after being rescued by police. Louise's younger sister Teresa Robinette and half-brother, Mr. Lambert, have said they hope the couple are locked up for the rest of their lives and suffer behind bars. Mr. Lambert, 30, was the last family member to speak to Louise when he called her on January 10, four days before the arrests, to discuss a possible trip to California. She told him that she was planning to buy a school bus and that she and David weren't finished having children. Mr. Lambert, from Hickson, Tennessee, told Mail Online. Then she told me they wanted another child. I said are you serious? Why would you want another kid? Haven't you got enough? But she said yes I want another child. Ms. Robinette added, I hope they torture my sister for the rest of her life. I have four siblings now instead of five. She is off my family tree. She is dead to me. I couldn't care less about speaking to Louise ever again. Mr. Lambert and Ms. Robinette claimed David kidnapped Louise when she was just 16 and convinced her to elope driving 1,000 miles from Princeton, West Virginia to Texas before they were stopped by police and returned home. They said their mother Phyllis allowed Louise to date David even though he was eight years her senior, but was too afraid to tell her husband Wayne, a preacher. He found out when the couple were stopped in Texas, and furiously told her that she had made her choice and allowed her to marry David. Mr. Robinette blamed his wife and the couple eventually divorced. They died just three months apart in 2016, with Mr. Lambert and Ms. Robinette claiming Louise refused to leave her family in California to visit them on their deathbeds or attend their funerals. On Thursday, Riverside County District Attorney Mike Heastron outlined the allegations against the parents, detailing shocking claims of physical and mental abuse against the children. He said the siblings suffered muscle wasting and stunted growth, were severely malnourished and beaten, and were even taunted with apple pies they were forbidden from eating. The mistreatment went on for years, leaving several of the children with cognitive impairment and nerve damage from extreme and prolonged physical abuse. Due to malnourishment the 12-year-old child had the weight of an average 7-year-old, while the oldest sibling, a 29-year-old woman, weighed just 82 pounds. They lacked a basic knowledge of life and were so poorly educated that many of them didn't know what a police officer or medication were. Mr. Heastron called it a case of human depravity and said the children were denied food and medical care, and were not even allowed to go to the bathroom when they were chained for weeks or months at a time. They were allowed to shower only once a year, had not been to a doctor in at least four years and none had ever visited a dentist. The children told investigators their parents began tying them up years ago, first with ropes, as punishment, and then began using chains and padlocks after one of the hogtied siblings managed to free themselves. The prosecutor said the children were punished with beatings and strangulations for things such as washing their hands above their wrists, which their parents saw as playing with water. They were allowed to write in journals, which are now being used as evidence, but were not allowed to have toys, 
with detectives discovering many unopened toys in their original packages, Mr. Heestrom said. The family slept during the day and were awake through the night, going to bed before dawn, helping the parents to evade detection, it was claimed. Police arrested David and Louise at their home in the early hours of Sunday after their emaciated 17-year-old daughter climbed out a window and called 911 on a deactivated mobile phone. She was so thin that police initially thought she was 10. A sister who escaped with her turned around and went back to the house because she was scared. Mr. Heestrom told reporters they had been planning their escape for more than two years, he added. The family moved into their large bungalow in Paris in 2014 after moving to nearby Marietta from Rio Vista, Texas in 2010. Police arrested David and Louise at their home in the early hours of Sunday after their emaciated 17-year-old daughter climbed out a window and called 911 on a deactivated mobile phone. She was so thin that police initially thought she was 10. A sister who escaped with her turned around and went back to the house because she was scared, Mr. Heestrom told reporters. They had been planning their escape for more than two years, he added. The family moved into their large bungalow in Paris in 2014 after moving to nearby Marietta from Rio Vista, Texas in 2010. Prosecutors are due to return to court on Wednesday to seek an order barring the parents from contacting their children with phone calls or letters from the jail where they are being held. Experts have said their children face a long recovery process, and would likely be left with permanent physical and emotional damage, such as anxiety and depression, as well as issues around food. The Riverside University Health System Foundation has set up a fund to support the children and the Turpins' two dogs are being put up for adoption by raffle.